Good morning, Bethel. All right. All right. Are you ready to uh, worship this morning? Yeah. Well, let's uh, go ahead and stand up. We're going to have a great day in the Lord. I'm going to open with uh, uh, a prayer, and uh, we're going to worship, and we're going to, man, praise the one who deserves it. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. And Lord, we pray that uh, we would just bless you with ourselves, Lord, Father God, as a living sacrifice. Go before us today and just speak to us, our redeeming King. Thank you, Lord God.
return to your knees at the feet of the Son of the one true God. your eyes for the kingdom of God is here no open your heart offer all to Jesus Christ is here
love endures. His love endures forever. His love endures forever. His love endures forever and ever again. His love endures. Just scream. 
scream it out to the heavens. God of miracles come. I need your supernatural love to break through. Nothing's impossible. You're the God of miracles. You're the God of miracles. Beloved Father, please come down and meet us. We are waiting for your touch. Open up the heavens, shower down your presence. We respond to your great love. We won't be satisfied with anything. Anything or 
ordinary We won't be satisfied at all We won't be satisfied where we belong right into his arms here we go let's go to the throne to the place where we belong right into his arms presence here at this moment. And Father, we want to be in that throne room with you. We thank you, Lord, that we're where we gather in your name. You're there with us. We want to more than just sense your presence. We want to respond to your presence. We want to be moved by your presence in a manner that changes us forever. Not just temporal, not gives us a good feeling by something that changes us forever. Thank you, Lord God. You are a God who loves us that much to invade our space, to invade our hearts, to move us in such a manner, to touch us in such a way where the issues that we have, they fall away. Lord, may this praise that we lift up to you truly be truly be the reflection of our faith in trusting you in believing you you are worthy
singing along with, with the saints and the elders, glorious song and the praises they sing never seem to get old. And I'll stay here forever singing, holy, holy, holy Lord, God Almighty. is what you desire for us. Lord, may we do that. May we have the conviction. May we have the determination. Lord, may we apply that that characteristic that we apply to things that we should. May we be stubborn and not move from how you direct us. Father God, you're a great God. You're a healing God. We see testimony here in this room. You're a providing God. We see testimony in this room. You're the God who protects. Again, testimony in this room. Lord, you're the one who fights our battles and beat. 
allows us to be victorious walking in you. That testimony again is in this room. Father God, I just thank you that you are our all and all and will provide. Thank you for being here this morning, Lord. Continue to speak to us. We just ask all these things in that precious name of Jesus Christ. And the church said, Amen. Oh, you can be seated. <laughs> it's a good morning to be in the house of the Lord, is it not? Um, we're going to move forward. I don't remember if the announcements got uh, scrolled, did they, Tammy? Okay. The I'm uh, The video. The video did? No. No. Okay. Well, we have a slight video, a uh, short video. Uh, much needed vacation and we are down in Cancun and enjoying ourselves but I want to uh, at least say hi to you uh, through the big screen here and uh, just give you a few announcements before we go much further with our service here today and so uh, first of all let me welcome anybody who is a guest that's watching us whether it's online or in person thank you so much for being with us and if you could do us a favor and fill out a uh, welcome card uh, that's the big white card that's on the seat back in front of you we would really appreciate that we'd like to send you a quick note to say thanks or you could go to this website, uh, www.bcot.org slash hello, and there is an online connect card that you could fill out and uh, tell us as much about yourself as you'd like to. And again, we just want to say thanks for your being here, and we mean that. Thank you very, very much. Now, if uh, you ladies have not signed up for the Time Apart Women's Conference, you can still do so. And all the information is located in the lobby. You can sign up there. That has all the costs and the dates and the times and everything. And uh, I hope you'll be a part of that. Also, we want to let you know that there is no service this Wednesday night. Again, no service this Wednesday night. If you do show up, take an offering. Uh, but otherwise, uh, just enjoy your night at home, and we'll be thinking about you. You be thinking about us as well. Hey, I mentioned the lobby earlier. There's all kinds of stuff that you could sign up for right now in the lobby. There's a lot of really good information out there that you could check out in the lobby. And uh, you can sign up for membership. You could check things out for the giveaway. Again, we've got the Time Apart Ladies Conference. We've got information about the upcoming bowling league. All of that is, uh, is in the lobby. So please check that out today before you leave. And uh, I, I think you'll find a, a lot of really useful info there. So now we're going to enter into a time of giving. And so if you would like to uh, participate in, in worshiping God with your giving here today, either by going online to our website, or uh, perhaps you would like to uh, drop a, uh, a gift in the back of the room near the sound booth in our giving box, please feel free to do so. And uh, I pray that God would bless you as you keep on blessing the work of the Lord. My son Jonathan is going to sing uh, in just a little bit here. And while he does, uh, we're going to uh, ask God to bless the gift and the giver here today. So I hope that you'll approach that this way. And then right after the song, Jonathan's going to introduce our special guest speaker today and uh, you will be blessed this morning so for now we love you i'm going to head to the pool take care wow okay i thought we were going to get serious and pray over the offering but i don't know that was pretty good well, let's go ahead and pray over the offering, okay, and uh, enjoy Jonathan's song. So, Heavenly Father, we thank you and we do ask you, Lord, to bless the gift 
and the giver. Father God, as we've already spoken, you are our provider. Lord, this is all yours anyway. Thank you for allowing us to be stewards. May we be good stewards of what you provide to us. And Lord, may we not just give a token. May we give as a woman did uh, by putting all that she had as an offering. Thank you for Jonathan. Prior to him even playing, Lord, bless his song, bless his offering. And Lord, we thank you for Matt coming and uh, preparing a word for us today. And keep our pastor, wow, internet safe while they swim in that pool. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Saturday was silent. Surely it was true. Since when has impossible ever stopped you? Friday's disappointment, Sunday's empty tomb. Since when has impossible ever stopped you? This is the sound of the drop bones rattling. This is the praise make a dead man walk again. Hope in the grave, I'm coming out. I wanna live, wanna live again. This is the sound of the drop bones rattling. Pentecostal fire, stirring in something new. You're not gonna run out of miracles anytime soon. Yeah, your resurrection power runs in my veins too. I believe there's another miracle here in this room. This is the sound of the dry bones rattling. This is the praise make a dead man walk again. Hope in the grave, I'm coming out. I want to live, want to live again. This is the sound of the dry bones rattling. Oh, oh. My God is able to save and deliver and heal and restore anything that he wants to. Just ask the man who was thrown on the bones of Elisha. There's anything that he can't do. Just ask the stone that was rolled at the tomb in the garden. What happens when God says to move? I feel him moving it now. I feel him doing it now. I feel him doing it now. Do it now. This is the sound of the dry bones rattling. This is the praise, make a dead man walk again. Oh, open the grave, I'm coming out. I want to live, want to live again. This is the sound of the dry bones rattling. Oh, oh. This is the sound of the dry bones rattling. This is the praise, make a dead man walk again. Hope in the grave, I'm coming out. I want to live, want to live again. This is the sound of the dry bones rattling. Oh, 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 oh. Now introducing the better half of my family. Matt Anderson to preach. If you come on up here. He's my wonderful uncle. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> it's uh, good to be here. Um, yeah, good to be anywhere, right? Isn't that how it goes? Um, grateful to uh, my brother and your pastor. Thanks, Jonathan. Didn't he like rip it up right there? Wasn't that amazing? 
That was fantastic. That was amazing. There's been so much good music going on here. I feel like I've, I gotta like keep up with all this stuff here. Um, <clears throat> I do want to thank my brother for the opportunity and keep praying for him during his missionary service to Mexico. <laughs> and, right? Hey, they got to be reached, right? They got to be reached. <laughs> um, hey, just a couple of things uh, about, about me uh, and what I do. Uh, for about the last uh, 12 years, I've... Uh, I've been leading a ministry called Monumental Ministries that is based off uh, an Old Testament concept of when the Lord did something significant. Often something would be done visually. Either they would build an altar or they would stack some rocks or they would change the name of a location. And uh, of course things weren't really written down back then. It was an oral tradition so that generations later they could come back to a certain place and the younger generation would say why is that here and the older generation could say this is the spot where God did this and we all need those places in our life because if you're like me I get amnesia very quickly and I get embroiled in something and I forget and I'll think I can't remember the last thing God did for me I have to come back to those landmarks and monuments in my life to be able to say oh that's right he is faithful, he is good, and he is for me and he's not against me. So that's what this ministry is about, is trying to facilitate moments like that uh, in people's lives. And uh, one of the ways we do that is what I'm doing here and speaking in churches. Another way is uh, by writing books. Uh, I have six um, that are available on my website, which is mattministry.com. Uh, they're also on Amazon, if that's your thing. Uh, but you can buy books on either place, um, and just check out what's there. Uh, we have a number of, of tools and um, uh, different dramas, things like that, that you can uh, participate in. And another thing that uh, I do is, uh, you know, last year I was one of only two billion people to start a podcast last year. So, <laughs> very distinctive. Uh, it is called the Mattcast, uh, and it is on all the major platforms. Uh, where you get podcasts. Um, the uniqueness of this is that uh, we combine the church world and the art world. Those are two worlds that typically don't like each other very much, but I've spent the last 12 years living in the art world of Cleveland. Uh, I served as a board member. I'm just about to finish, actually. Uh, I served as a board member and chairman of the board for a modern dance company in Cleveland. And covertly, we're doing that evangelism winning souls thing and we're introducing Jesus to people who probably would not walk into our church and uh, being a part of that is it's an interesting back and forth between those two worlds so we try to address that and we encourage Christians that are creative to uh, to just step out in their creativity uh, so please subscribe to that we'd love to have you as a part of the Matcast family um, we're planning on doing a 20th anniversary episode uh, regarding 9-11 here in a, in a few weeks uh, so be looking for that. We'd love to have you join us. Well, today we are headed to Luke chapter 8. So if you have a copy of the scriptures, this would be the perfect place to go. Uh, Acts, or excuse me, Luke chapter 8. Uh, I, guess, I guess we all have our limits, don't we? I mean, we, we all try to be patient. We try to uh, express the fruit of the Spirit in all situations. But man, there's something about when, when you feel like you're getting pushed around that can sort of bring out the worst in us. I was, um, I was at the, uh, the dealership one day and I was getting an oil change. How many bad stories have started with that line? I was just getting an oil change when, right? And I'm in the waiting room and, uh, and, and someone from the Honda place walks in and she, she's got a clipboard. That's a bad sign, isn't it, when they've got the clipboard? <laughs> It's almost as if you have a loved one, you know, in the hospital, and they come out, and they're like, Mr. Anderson, you know, <laughs> like, uh-oh. And uh, she begins listing, and I, I'm a guy, I keep my car well-maintained. Uh, my last car, I, when I finally turned it in, it had 385,000 miles on it. I, I, I can't do anything with a car, but I know enough to know how to get it maintained. She starts listing, I'm not kidding you, it was eight to ten things. I can't remember exactly. 
She goes, well, first of all, we have this. I mean, that's going to be $300. And then we have this. She's going through the entire list. And finally, she finishes, and I go, are the car mats okay? Do we need like, to switch those out too? Okay, not a good moment for me, right? But I felt like I was getting pushed around. Uh, there's a, a man from New England. He, uh, he received a bill for an unused credit card stating that he owed zero dollars and zero cents. Well, of course, he ignored it and threw it away. But then the next month, he received another one like it and threw that away too because he hadn't used it. The following month, the credit card company sent him a very nasty note stating they were going to cancel his card if he didn't send them zero dollars and zero cents immediately. <laughs> so he called them. He spoke to a customer service rep. They admitted it was a computer error, and he was told they would take care of it. Well, the following month, he decided to then use his credit card for the first time, believing that purchasing something would probably stop the flow of zero dollar, zero cent bills. However, when he tried to use it, he found that his card had been canceled. He called the credit card company who apologized for the computer error once again and said that they would take care of it. The next day, he got a bill in the mail for zero dollars and zero cents stating that payment was now overdue. <laughs> Assuming that because he had spoken to the credit card company the day before that what he had just received now didn't count, he just set it aside and believed it had been taken care of. Well, the next month, he received a bill for zero dollars and zero cents stating that he had 10 days to pay his account or they would have to take steps to recover the debt. Finally giving in, he thought he would play the company at their own game, and he sent them a check for zero dollars and zero cents. Well, the computer duly processed his payment and returned a statement to the effect that he now owed the credit card uh, company nothing at all. A week later, the man's bank called, asking him what he was doing writing a check for zero dollars and zero cents. After a lengthy explanation, the bank replied that the zero dollar, zero cent check had caused their check processing software to fail. <laughs> the bank now could not process any checks for any customers that day because his zero dollar, zero cent check caused the computer to crash. The following month, the man received a letter from the credit card company claiming that his check had bounced <laughs> and that now he owed them zero dollars and zero cents, and unless he sent payment, would be taking steps to recover the debt. I tell you, there are times when it, it just seems like life is kind of beating us up. And we feel like we have to respond. I, haven't we all felt like that over the last year and a half? You know, I, I think about all this COVID stuff, and it, it almost feels like we're, living, we're in a living whack-a-mole game. Anyone ever played the whack-a-mole game, right? And the little thing, you know, it's like six holes or nine holes or something, and a mole, and you, bam, you hit it with, but we're the mole. That's, that's the problem. And, and we just think, okay, are, are we going to be all right? Boom, no, get in your house and stay in your house, and we tell you you can leave your house. Boom, what are you doing standing four feet away from somebody? Make that six feet, mister, back up. Boom, what, one mask, put on two masks. What, are you kidding me? Right? And we, we just, you know. And you get to that point where you're just like, my word, is it ever going to end? And this morning we're going to get to know, I think, one of the most unique healings in the ministry of Jesus. Uh, most healings were sort of people uh, going to someone or someone was brought to Jesus or Jesus came right at somebody. But this one was different. It involves a very desperate woman who had suffered for 12 years and she tried everything to get better. And nothing had worked. She felt like life had just been beating her down for 12 years. But she heard that this Jesus guy was coming into town. She had heard he did amazing things. But getting to him would not be easy. So would she give up in the face of the odds? Or would she find a way? Let's look at this wonderful story from Luke chapter 8. We're starting at verse 42. As Jesus went with him, he was surrounded by the crowds. A woman in the crowd has suffered for 12 years with constant bleeding, and she could find no cure. 
Coming up behind Jesus, she touched the fringe of his robe. Immediately, the bleeding stopped. Who touched me, Jesus asked. Everyone denied it, and Peter said, Master, this whole crowd is pressing up against you. But Jesus said, Someone deliberately touched me, for I felt healing power go out from me. When the woman realized that she could not stay hidden, she began to tremble and fell to her knees in front of him. The whole crowd heard her explain why she had touched him and that she had been immediately healed. Daughter, he said to her, your faith has made you well. Go in peace. This morning's title is When Push Comes to Shove. This next line, I am stealing. I heard a, an adult Wednesday night Bible study teacher say this line, and this is what prompted this whole sermon. She said, sometimes we have to shove our way to Jesus. And when she said that, you know, have you ever been like listening to a message and something gets said, and you might be the only person in the room that goes, whoa, wait a minute, whoa, 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 right? That's one of those awesome Holy Spirit moments. That was one for me. And this woman was in the midst of a huge crowd and everybody wanted Jesus, of course. How in the world would she get to him? How do we get to him sometimes? When, when we get to these things, when we get to these places where it feels like we just can't break through, the Lord is so available, folks. And we've sang about that this morning. But there might be some things within our own heart and mind that have to be dealt with in the midst of this journey on our way to Jesus. So let me just give three kind of pieces of advice. Number one, we need to get rid. There, there's going to be a couple of things. Well, there's more than that. But two I want to highlight in this message that we probably need to get rid of if we really want to get to that place of receiving from Jesus what we absolutely need and that seems bigger than us. And there are some things we just plain get rid of if we hope to receive everything from the Lord. But what I'm talking about here is not what you would expect. Uh, we all know there are behaviors and there are habits that need to be submitted to Christ that can really, we can bring a lot of hurt and pain on ourselves. But here, I'm speaking of a couple of habits and attitudes that we often carry that I think can inhibit us from even making our way to the Lord. So the first thing when it comes to getting rid is this, stop playing the victim. I think there are a few things more dangerous than when someone believes themselves to be the perennial victim. They get into, onto a carousel of pain and self-inflicted wounds doing the same things over and over again, believing they will get different results. They live off the sympathy of others and almost seem to enjoy putting themselves in a position where, they're, where they can be hurt or mistreated. And I don't want to minimize any pain that anyone in this room has gone through. Because we've all, we've all got stories in this room. We've all had incredible adversities to get through, and I don't want to minimize that at all. But we don't have to become what happens to us. There is a difference between things happening to us and allowing those things to become who we are. The worst thing that can happen to the chronic victim now, here's the worst thing that can happen, it's for them to get better. Because then they won't know who they are anymore. Uh, I have a friend that I, that I met, I ministered in a church for a while, and uh, in fact, I'm going to be seeing him soon. And he kind of falls into this, into this rhythm. And he believes that he's always misunderstood. Nobody understands what I'm going through. Nobody really understands the pain that I'm in. Nobody really understands. And this has become his identity. And now everything in his life now it seeks to reinforce that point. So every flat tire, you know what I mean? Every bad weather when we want a good weather, reinforces, oh, see, that's what, that's what I'm talking about right there. <laughs> right? Don't think it can't happen. So no matter what advice or truth 
that he's given, it just won't register. Because that would mean someone understood him. I think he's more aware of this problem, and I think he is like working really well to, uh, to get there. But boy, it is a powerful, dangerous force when we allow something that happened to us to become who we are. It's one thing to be inflicted with cancer. It's another thing to allow cancer to become who we are. Are we determined to always be the jilted lover, the guy who is underestimated, the woman that no one talks to? If so, we'll make sure it happens to keep our victim status. Now, this woman had a choice to make 12 years, folks. Wow. That's more, <laughs> that's more than a lot of marriages today, let alone a lot of things. 12 years to deal with this infirmity and this affliction. And she could have so allowed this to become who she was. And maybe she did it at some point in her life. But now for the first time, she has hope. And she, she could have convinced herself, oh, this is going to turn out like everything else. And we're back on the carousel right? And it can keep us from going to the Lord to allow him to surprise us with something beautiful and awesome and powerful. She could have allowed that to become who she was and isolate herself. Do you realize y'all just being here this morning is just a sign that you're not really interested in playing the victim? It would be so easy to just go, because this is where Satan wants us, isn't it? He wants us alone. Where he can just beat us and pound us into submission, and we're only listening to his story. But just the fact that you're here today, I hope, <laughs> is evidence that, Jesus, I need, I need to hear your story in my life and where all this fits in. Jesus doesn't want us to only be known for our troubles. He wants us to be known for our victories over those troubles because he's the one who gets the glory from that. We will not experience really a true new life in Christ until we despise our current one. To put it another way, if we keep doing what we're doing, we'll keep getting what we're getting. So even if our circumstances don't change, we can change in the midst of them. We can change our, our mind about what is happening and that he's for us and not against us. And guess what? We're on our way. I think we also, secondly, need to stop looking to people before looking to God. I am so guilty of this. Anybody else in the room? So we're like, oh, what's your problem, dude? I don't know why are you speaking. <laughs> okay, I'm just the one guy. It is a nasty habit we Christians adopt, though. And we don't even realize it. it it's kind of amazing how sometimes we make prayer our last resort. That's what they do on TV and movies. A loved one's sick, they're in the hospital, and then suddenly, what, they find the hospital chapel? You know what I mean? You can tell they don't know what one looks like. And, and they always start with, oh, I've never prayed before. But You know what I mean? And there are a lot of Christians who carry themselves this way. They're like, I don't, I don't want to bug God with it. I'll, I'll, like, figure it out. I'll engineer a solution. And I don't know why we consult everyone on the Lord's green earth before we consult the one who made the green earth. But we do. We talk to our friends. We talk to our pastor. We talk to uh, people that we know in church. We talk to our boss. We talk to our employees. We talk to toll booth workers, baristas, whoever, whoever we can find. God, I still don't have an answer. If people are more accessible to us than God is, what does that say about us? Now we find out from Mark chapter 5, this is another version of this same story. It says this, that she had suffered much under many physicians and had spent all that she had and was no better, but rather grew worse. Now, I want to say this. And again, there's been a lot of necessary thanks and applause to first responders and healthcare workers over the last year and a half. And those of you in the room, I mean, two of my dear friends are both in the medical field. So I'm not downgrading that whatsoever. But there are times that I, I just think, you know, because we've fallen again into this trap. And someone will say, Pastor, would you pray for me? I'm facing this surgery. Absolutely, I will do that. And that's always great. 
But let's, so how about before we pray for God to guide the surgeon's hands, we pray that God removes the cancer. Right? People are skilled and God has given them that skill and God bless you all for using it. And we're not insulting you, but we want to give you a little less work. Because he still is the great physician. And too often we're seeking man's wisdom just by nature, right? I'm sick. Call the doctor, right? It's just, a, it's like the knee comes, you know, the leg comes up and we hit the knee, right? And again, there's nothing wrong with that, but let's give Jesus a chance. Let's give him a, let's give him a shot. I don't think Jesus is ever going to go, hmm, right? To anything we, you know, ooh, that's a new one. He knows what he's doing. Oh, this poor woman, she had spent everything trying to find an answer. And there are going to be times in life in which all the usual answers and remedies won't work. And so it forces us. And I think the Lord somehow seizes an opportunity to say, hey, how about seeking me? And realizing we probably should have gone to him in the first place. And as wonderful as we believe the people around us to be, they cannot give us wisdom, power, and advice that God can. And sometimes God will ask us to do some crazy things that make sense to absolutely no one. We will never know that, though, unless we ask him. I have a buddy who started a church uh, a few years ago, and uh, he went to the heads of his denomination. He goes, yeah, I want to start a church. I said, okay, you can do model A, and then he explained what that was, or model B. And he went, there's only two? Because he kind of had something different in mind. And, you know, the Lord might choose C, folks. I have found that very true in my own life. I get really settled on, okay, which of these two is it? And the Lord goes, dude, you're not even on the right stadium right now. I got something totally different going on. But if we don't seek God's wisdom, we might just automatically select A or B, when maybe plan C was for us. Okay, number two, very quickly, we need to get past. Not just get rid, but we need to get past. So the woman resolves, she goes, no matter how difficult this is, she's going to somehow get to Jesus. She believes in her heart that if she can only get a hold of him, even if she gets a hold of his clothing, that she will be healed. And folks, that is faith, is it not? Sure is. That's faith in the right place. But she's got to get through a mammoth crowd of people first. And if you've ever been in a situation like that, whether you're leaving a pro sports event or a huge concert, you know it can be a little bit difficult to maneuver. And this is what she's facing, especially if you're determined to push your way to the front. So who or what do we need to get past and maybe even shove aside in order to get to the Lord? I think first we need to get past people who want us to stay the same. I want to be clear about something right here. These folks are not necessarily evil people. Many of them have, though, a fixed understanding of who you and I are. So anything we do that contradicts that can be a little confusing for them. And that doesn't have to be people who are even close to us. This can include people who know us professionally or people who attend church with us. I, I think it's tough for people to see us in any other light than the one that's been cast for us. And I remember when I followed the Lord in, uh, uh, in 2008 into this ministry, uh, <laughs> a lot of folks had a hard time with it because they only saw me as a potential senior pastor. Because, like, that's the route you take. Didn't you know that, Matt, when you, like, signed the card for the Assemblies of God? Didn't you know that? That once, you know, once you're, you know, you're kind of old enough, you're like, okay, senior pastor, go. I was like, I don't think I want to do that. You, you'd thought I'd blaspheme the Holy Spirit. Like, oh, you what? My word. And it really can be just innocent like that, but it can also leave us where we are. We're like, well, okay, I don't know what I was thinking. I'll just stay right here. And keep us from shoving our way to the Lord. Then there are those who refuse to grow themselves and refuse for us to grow. 
And I'm not sure what the motivation may be, but it can be really harmful to us. I often do see this in family structures that perpetually live in like a poverty mindset. It becomes the family system that everyone now must abide by. And if someone should begin to excel in some way, and even maybe hint at choosing a different path, they begin to rise. It is amazing, and I call them heel grabbers, show up and go, whoa, 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 whoa. I, don't, uh-uh. I, don't, I don't think so. See, here's the thing. As you and I advance in Christ, as we grow, as we are disciples, which means we don't stay the same. We are becoming, we are being sanctified, right? We are becoming more like him. There will be people in our life who are not comfortable with that. Because we're now reminding them of what they should be doing. And they don't want to be reminded. They just want to stay put. They got their happy little existence. They got their little world. Don't mess with my world. I got all my Legos stacked and built perfectly. Do not touch the Legos. Right? And then we get our set of Legos and we start building different things. Things that he had not thought of. And it ticks him off. And he tries to kick over our Legos. Who do you think you are building that? And our, our life can really be filled with folks like that. Because somebody breaks the system. It may put us in a situation where we have to choose between a relationship or friendship and our own progress, our own walk with Christ. The question is, who will we choose in that moment? I was talking to my best friend. We were on vacation one time. And I said, what is the biggest, what's the biggest deal breaker in any relationship you have in life? Whether it's friendship, romantic, whatever it is. What, what's the biggest deal, make, uh, deal breaker for you? And he said, it's when someone refuses to grow. That's a good answer. And think about it. If we don't change... They don't have to either. As long as we just stay the same, then they can be content to do likewise. We may have to shove our way past these mostly well-intentioned folks for the sake of our spiritual health and life. And then we need to get past our insecurities. Now think about what this woman had to do. She had to push, maybe politely, shove, past maybe hundreds of people. And it probably doesn't take long before the, uh, I'm sorry, pardon me, excuse me, I'm sorry, pardon me, I just need to, excuse me, I'm sorry, I don't need to do pardon me, I'm just kind of moving my way, yeah, I know, I'm sorry, pardon me, just excuse me. Stops working. After a while, people start saying, hey, watch it, lady, where do you think you're going? You're not allowed up here. I got here early to get this spot. What makes you think you can just push your way to the front? That's not fair. It's like those people in traffic. When you're in the lane that you're supposed to be in, then you get these people. Like, I'm going to fly all the way to the front. Don't let me in. Oh, man, if I just had the power of thunder and lightning at that moment. Now you have no car, right? This is... There is that sense of unfairness, but she didn't care at that moment. Any self-respecting person would start to get just a little insecure. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, inconveniencing all these folks. I'm sure she was tempted to stop at some point, believing she had crossed the line, and now she was just being rude. And when you and I are determined to move toward the Lord, it's going to mean having to make some changes. Chances are there are going to be changes that other people don't like, and most likely we're hear some awful stuff in our heads. Where do you think you're going? You're not allowed over there. That's not for you. That's for God's chosen. You're not qualified. You're too impure. You have too much baggage. You're damaged goods. Nothing is going to change. You're always going to be like this. Any of that sound familiar? That's the enemy's playbook. Can we keep walking, pushing, and shoving our way past all of those lies? Even though it will force us to confront the enemy strongholds that have worked on us 
all of our lives. You know why it's called a stronghold? Because it has a strong hold on us. This is a big deal. See, this is, we're crossing into enemy territory land right here. And the great news is that if we seek him, we will find him. If we seek him with all of our hearts. And it will take all of our hearts. We need to get rid and get past. And then lastly, we need to get ready. Now let's, let's zoom back thousands of years, shall we? This woman's condition of bleeding made her ceremonially and socially unclean. And this would be quite a burden to live under for 12 years. According to the Jewish uh, laws and ideas of the time, if this woman touched anyone, she imparted her uncleanness to them. No social distancing going on here. An uncleanness that would not allow them to make, uh, take part in any aspect of Israel's worship. At least for a season. But for her, it was a daily event, so it meant forever. Because this woman's condition was also embarrassing... And because she was ceremonially unclean and will be condemned for touching Jesus or even being an oppressing crowd, she wanted to do this secretly. She did not openly ask Jesus to be healed. She was embarrassed at her state of affairs. So she touches, quote, the fringe. King James says the hem of Jesus' robe. Now, the word fringe, which means uh, border or border, is the Greek word for the tassel which male Jews were to wear on the corners of their outer garments. The woman approached Jesus with a degree of superstition, probably, thinking there was power in the fringe itself. Yet there was also this great element of faith because there is no evidence that Jesus had ever healed that way before. Because even though her faith had elements of probably a little bit, it wasn't quite perfect, and a little superstitious, she believed in the healing power of Jesus. And that's what counted. And the border of his garment served as a point of contact for that faith. So her plan is, okay, I'm just going to like, shove, 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 I'm just going to like, grab that, and go, okay, let me just go, just go. Right? That's what she wanted. It's like, nobody will know, but me and, you, you know, me and the Lord. That was the goal. There are many things that we could say weren't exactly perfect in the way she handled this. Jesus didn't care, so neither will we. Aren't you glad we don't have to get everything just right and perfect for Jesus to touch us? More than anything, her faith was in Jesus, and the object of faith was much more important than the quality of faith. See, we need to get ready because Jesus won't let us be anonymous. Now, I know I know there's an element of don't do your works before man so people see them and glorify you. You know, there, there is that. I get it. But uh, if we think we're going to have just this awesome miracle and no one's going to know about it, I think not, my friend. She thought, I'll touch the robe. I'll just blend in. I'll sneak away. No muss, no fuss. And I can understand her. I'm actually, I'm not the kind of guy who likes to get noticed in a crowd. Uh, this is a story involving your pastor. We were, uh, this is on, we were on Howe, and uh, this is, uh, boy, this is probably 10, 11, 12 years ago. And I was about to get my first Chick-fil-A experience. Because there weren't as many around back then, and that, the one on Howe has been there a long time. And... Uh, So apparently there's this ritual that they maybe used to do. I don't know if they do it anymore. But uh, apparently when they find out it's your first time, the, uh, the help rings a cowbell and announces to the entire restaurant that it's your first time there. I expressed to my brother my distaste for that ritual, which was a mistake. So apparently, he talked to whoever, he somehow did this out of my knowledge. And when I start my order, first time 
damn it, Chick-fil-A! My damn it, Chick-fil-A! <laughs> and that poor kid, I like bore a hole into him. <laughs> the stare of death. So he, he looked at Phil and said, he's going to rip my head off, isn't he? Yes. And she didn't want to be noticed either. But when it comes to making spiritual contact, Jesus won't let us get away with anonymity. He literally stops the proceedings. Can you almost imagine? It's like, and Jesus goes, who touched me? Right, the record screech thing, right? And it's quiet. Who touched me? Uh, and everyone probably thinks he's kind of mad now. Uh, not me. Oh, it wasn't me. Hey, man, I don't know. Look over there. I don't know. You know what I mean? Because mm. that's what our scripture says. Everyone's denying it. Oh, man. Now she did it. Now Jesus was going to point her out, rat her out, as having now made him unclean. Because that's what the Pharisees would have done. Oh, she did it. She's like, it's all going to come out now. How surprised she was about to be. I know we talk about how when we touch Jesus, we're never the same. Have we ever considered the fact that when we touch Jesus in faith, he is affected too? It affects him. It's not just, hmm, I don't know. Just a walk through the crowd and... Folks, when we touch him, he goes, who touched me? It was you, wasn't it? It affects him. Maybe we didn't think it meant anything to him, but it does. When we reach out to him in love and dedication, he doesn't just keep moving like a politician at a campaign stop. He stops and says, who touched me? We matter to him. We're not just some nameless form existing on the earth. Now in truth, Jesus knew who touched him. <laughs> of course he did. He just wanted her to acknowledge it. And then the last thing we should get ready for when this happens is that Jesus leaves us better than he finds us. Every single time. And that means we have to shove our way past all the hindrances and we have to prepare ourselves for him to do what only he can do. If we seek him, we will find him. He will find us. And when he does, he performs acts of forgiveness and healing and deliverance that can change us forever. You know what Jesus didn't say in this scripture? He didn't say, I healed you. Well, did he? Of course, absolutely he did. But she was a part of the process. Your faith has made you well. Oh, and the biggest surprise of all is what he called her. Daughter. Not you unclean woman. Daughter. Your faith has healed you. Isn't that amazing? He wanted her to know that. He wants you to know that. He wants you to know you're still in the family. You may not feel like you are. You are. He wanted her to know that she was healed. He wanted everyone in the crowd to know she was healed. It was almost like, I could almost, we'll put it in 21st century lingo. I could almost, Jesus saying, your faith has made you well. Now say something. <laughs> to the crowd. <laughs> almost. Now someone in this room try to shame her. Just try it. He wants us to know these things. And when we get to Jesus, we won't be disappointed. Not only was she made whole, but she got something she didn't bargain for. She was called daughter. And now she had a relationship too. On top of everything else. On top of the healing. We just need to let him surprise us again with his power. We may need to shove some things aside first. I'm going to ask you to bow your heads, please. And when Jonathan's going to return.
So in your mind, I want you to imagine a scenario. If you're a believer, I want you to just begin imagining a scenario like you're this woman, and you can see Jesus maybe about 100 yards away, but there's about three or 400 people in between you. I want you just to get that in your mind, would you, for just a moment? Believer, while you're there, I just want to pose this to anyone in the room who hasn't given their life to Christ. If you've never handed over your life to Jesus to give him full control and to have him remove your sins because you can't fix yourself, you can do that if you desire to be with this amazing Lord for the rest of your life. You can do it right where you're seated. Because I can assure you, he is right next to you, urging you on. He is hoping this will be your moment. And he is listening. And all you need to do is pray something very simple. All you need to do is, is whisper something like this to him. Dear Jesus, I need you. I'm a mess. And I can't fix it. I believe you can fix me. You can forgive me. You can heal me. You can change me. I hand over my life to you and you alone. Please forgive me. Change my life. Give me new purpose. My life is yours. And my friend, just like that, just like that, the Lord hears that and receives it. And he looks at you and he says, son, daughter, welcome to the family. He's not going to stop and rattle off your top 12 sins. No, he already knows those. You've offered them to him. And now he has rescued you saved you and you can live in that now believer in Christ what do you need to get to Jesus for is there a big thing that you're, you're just trying to get to him and you feel like he's so far but you can see him come on you can see him he's a hundred yards out there he is okay there's a lot of people in between you I get it it's so easy right now to say I'll never get there I'll never get there no that's the enemy trying to mess you up He's a liar. He's been lying from the beginning. And it, there may be some insecurities that you have. You might feel like you're not enough. You might feel like you're, you're not very talented. You're not very smart. You don't know enough of the Bible. All these things that really are not important in light of Christ. Not in this moment. You have to know that he loves you. And remind yourself of that. And push away some insecurities. Just say, okay, I'm not going to believe that stuff. I know I'm worth it to the Lord. So we do a little, excuse me, I'm sorry. Pardon me. I'm, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm so, yeah, I, yeah, sorry, I apologize. I, excuse me. Excuse me. I have to like, yeah, I, I know. I get it. I know. People might even be yelling at you, saying, stop it. This is ridiculous. You are so making a fool of yourself right now. you got to keep going. you got to keep going. you got to keep going. Yeah, I, okay, sorry. Excuse me. Excuse me. Those, those people that you love who want you to stay the same because they like you the way you are, you say, oh, hey, love you, but excuse me. Pardon me. I'm sorry. i got to, I guess, yeah, i got to, like, get through. And when you get to the Lord... He may not do it the way he did it in this story. I think he'll see you coming. And he'll look at you and he'll place his arms around you and he'll say, see, that wasn't so hard. So let me just remind you who you are. You're my child. I love you and I'm proud of you. I'm glad that you have shown that you love me more than anything else and I know what you're going through right now now watch me do what I can do so this morning as I pray for this congregation would you see yourself in Jesus presence would you see yourself looking into his face no one in between you 
I want you to look into his eyes as I pray over you. Jesus, you are approachable. And you are a rewarder of those who diligently seek after you. And maybe for a number of folks in the congregation today, there's something that's, maybe it's lasted 12 years. Maybe it's been a friend or a family member who's gone astray. They've been making bad choices. We've tried everything we can. We've tried to send them all the right books, all the right video links. Nothing's worked. Jesus, we're asking you, Lord, what, would you please? Would you heal? Would you save? Would you deliver? Oh, my friend, you know how he's going to respond. Just look into his eyes and you'll know. So Jesus, I pray for this church. I pray that nothing gets in between. And anything that tries, we can lovingly shove aside and say, oh, I know, but excuse me. There's a Lord I need to talk to. So Jesus, pour out your love upon this church. Help us to realize that you know what we're going through. You know it. But now, Lord, as we sang earlier, more than blessings, we just want you. Even if we got to grab the fringe of your robe, we'll do it. And you will look at us and say, who touched me? It was you. Jesus, do amazing things so that you and you alone get the glory. We ask for souls to come into this building and to find an eternal home in you. We ask for a revival of all of us, that we will become more like you. Thank you, Lord, for Pastor Phil and Annette and all that they have done over these last 20 plus years to lead this congregation. Pray that you bless them immensely. Church, could we all stand, please? Now, Lord Jesus, I speak blessing into this church. I ask for its greatest days to still be ahead. We ask you to do what no man can debate with. It will just floor the experts and leave those others silent. Do the thing only you can do in this place. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 The Lord give you an awesome week this week. And keep searching after him.